Olajumoke Adenowo is a multiple award-winning architect with over three decades of industry experience. Described as Africa's star architect and trailblazer when profiled by CNN and BBC, she is one of Africa's most outstanding architects and the only female in this elite category. Christened the face of architecture in Nigeria by The Guardian, she has been featured in the world's foremost architectural journal, Architectural Record, and Forbes Women and Fortune magazine. In 2013, she was instituted into the Hall of Fame of Personalities of Black Ancestry by the University of West England, Bristol, among other global personalities of black heritage. She is a quintessential polymath, chartered architect, academic laureate, philanthropist, entrepreneur, chartered arbitrator, author, and radio show host. She is also a member of the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders. After gaining admission into Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, at the age of 14, she acquired the first distinction in Master of Science in Architecture in the university's history. She is also an alumnus of several institutions, including the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, the Yale School of Management, MIT, the IESE Business School, amongst other professional affiliations. She is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. Starting her career at Femi Majagudumi Associates, where she had the privilege of designing the Federal Ministry of Finance headquarters in Abuja, in 1994, she founded her own multi-award winning architecture firm, AD Consulting, which specializes also in master planning of eco-sensitive developments. AD Consulting is Nigeria's most internationally awarded firm. She has been the principal partner from inception to date. In 1999, her passion for raising transformational leaders led her to establish the faith-based philanthropy Awesome Treasures Foundation, recognized by the United Nations and affiliated to the Edmund Doe Rothschild Foundation Family Philanthropy Platform. Awesome Treasures closely raises transnational leaders amongst youth and women towards an African renaissance. Awesome Treasures Foundation operates on three continents with initiatives impacting millions. Since 2011, she has hosted her own syndicated radio program and podcast on leadership voice of change. She has been honored with numerous awards for her architecture and philanthropy. These include the Forbes Women Africa Entrepreneur of the Year 2020, the New African Businesswoman of the Year Award 2015, the Cambridge African Society Award, amongst several others. Adenowo is featured on several power lists, recognized as one of Africa's 50 most powerful women by Forbes Women Africa one of Africa's 100 Most Powerful Women by WIAW, Africa's Most Inspiring Businesswoman by the Labatissor de Economie de l'Afrique, amongst others. She is the opening feature in renowned art historian Agatha Toromanov's latest publication on the world's greatest female architect in history. In 2019, she was appointed a visiting professor at the Technische Universität München Germany's leading architectural program, where she was honored as a laureate and a guest scientist at the Chair of Theory, History of Architecture and Art and Design. Her academic articles have been published by leading architectural publishing houses, and her 12 published books include her first work of fiction, which has a cult following, Beyond My Dreams, Acts of the Holy Spirit, and women as God intended. She is a public speaker at international summits and conferences, including McKinsey and Co. Leadership Forum, Solve at MIT, Cambridge University African Society, the Global Women's Forum, Host the Kongs Munich, the Institute of Directors and several other platforms. Olajumoke has served on the jury and panels of global initiatives, such as the Cartier Initiative for Women Awards, she serves on the boards of corporate entities, educational institutions, and charitable foundations. She is married to Olukorede, and they are blessed with two men. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Olajumoke Adenowo. Thank you. Thank you very much.
God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. So I said to God, this intro is too long. He said, should I shorten it? Then I thought, maybe not. Maybe he shouldn't shorten it. Uh, they said, give honor to whom honor is due. When I was entering into this space, someone said, you need to talk to Apostle Felix Oko. I said, oh, should I? <laughs> so... I called, on, I called on my mentee's husband, Apostle General Madubuko, who said, oh yeah, I'll introduce you to him. They sent me the world's best protocol and security team ever. I've never seen anything like that. I think there are about 30 delegates also from House of Treasures here. And then I met... Okay. I didn't know I was just doing press ups, meeting people in South Africa. Then I met Dr. Pearl Kupe. It was like a kindred spirit. Within two minutes, we were prophesying. The atmosphere changed. It is what it is. You're a Deborah. You are a voice. You know it. Can we celebrate Dr. Pelkupi one more time? For her largeness of heart. You know, there are all kinds of gatekeepers, but this is a Mordecai. Somebody who listens at the gate for what God is doing over the land. When she was talking to me, God said, the spirit and the bride say, Come. And I knew the opposition I had faced before then. In essay, I have with me Mary Mulenga Harewaf, came all the way from Zambia. I recognize the chair of chairs. That was such a, you just took the stump. I was like, please don't get me into trouble. I have a visa. I need to. <laughs> thank you so much, Tammy. And thank you for having me on Metro FM. And she's inviting us back again tomorrow at 8.20. I hope I don't get into trouble with what I'm trying, but I shall try. We have the chair, a UK chair here, Dr. Ayo. We have people from all over the world. Zibu, I know you. I see you, thank you so much, Zibu. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Muzi. Muzi has such a kingdom heart. It's not about the work he's doing here. He's a servant of the kingdom. And we appreciate you for the grace with which you do what you do. My brother Chim, I have known for th since 1984. Yes, we were in fellowship in uni together. I think I saw Apostle Hans Howard. I saw his Agbada at least coming. I'm celebrating you, Apostle. <laughs> Can you please celebrate yourself? If I've not mentioned your name, thank you so much, Apostle. Thank you. Thank you everybody who worked so tirelessly behind the scenes to bring us here. I don't know if Dr. Shogu is here, if Dr. Femi Junaid is here, there's so many people. Thank you so much. We are about to enter into another phase of the meeting. Sister Perseverance and Brother Lawrence. What do I say? Not only did they release their car, they're driving me. And I know I've seen your profiles. I know what you mean in this country. I appreciate you for your humility. Can you rise? For your love for God, for your love for the kingdom. Let me tell you something about the heart of David. God said he's a man after my own heart. And I realized part of why David was a man after God's heart is because he never became big in his own eyes. When you are not yet big in your own eyes, God keeps lifting you. May he dry your tears. May he give you the deepest desires of your heart. I love you. You may be seated. Ah. 
We sanctify the Holy Spirit. The things He does in awesome treasures, we need to sanctify Him apart to make it clear that we're not the doer of it. Do you see? Shall we rise and just honor the Spirit of the living God? The divine presence of God. The face of God that is going with us into this next phase. Because your life is about to change permanently. And it's not a cliche. We didn't want to take testimonies from South Africa. We just recorded and said, let's just play a recording. <laughs> we know what God has done for South Africans via Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> The time is now. The hour has come. That the dead may hear the voice of the Son of God and live. That bone may come to bone in your life. Muscle to muscle and sinew to sinew. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us. Take charge. <laughs> you will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. You will not suffer my food to be moved. The awesome treasures are already jumping. I will cause you to understand something. No man to leaves the earth. Do you understand me? So, when things begin to happen in this hall, Understand what it is and let your neighbor be free because they're in the presence of God. I hear that South Africans don't form, don't just uh, pretend in God's presence. I hear you love God. Do you love God? Prove it to me. When you are in the presence of God, you are free, you have liberty. Do you understand? I was in Lusaka just two weeks ago. I saw men pulling their wives. No, stop scattering now. The more they pull the wife, then the man themselves will scatter. Are you listening? So if your neighbor is crying, leave them because the mantle of John Kuyon has not left the earth. So there is something that draws them in the spirit realm. If your neighbor is screaming or slain, leave them. Because Mara Woodward's Etta's mantle is here in this hall. Is this not the South Africa of Don Gile? What happened? Mama Shatali Brande Bakasa. Lebre Meme Jelly Branzo When God takes people away from the earth, He does not take away their mantle. So the presence that was with Catherine Kuhlman is here with us. Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. You may be seated for a moment. Kamasha Prata Livrada. Maya Brata Lebrata. I can see with the eyes of my spirit and I see a new church rising yes I know they're coming in their thousands they're coming from afar they're coming from afar <laughs> oh oh, 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 oh South Africa oh, 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 oh these 
These are the days of His power. We have come to appoint kings and to anoint priests. This is not a teaching. This is an apostolic lifting. Understand, God created them male and female, created in them. When the mothers come, the time for birthing has come. You didn't get that. A man may inseminate, a man can start. It will need a woman to conceive, to nurture, and birth. The time for the birthing of your destiny has come. Everybody has their proper gift of God. When you see me, your destiny is about to be accelerated, liberated, crystallized. For we carry these treasures in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. A woman is a gate, music. A woman is a portal. That is why every society fights the woman. Because the enemy is afraid of what the woman will birth. Because he heard God say in the proto evangelicum, the seed of the woman will bruise your head. So he knows that whatever comes out of us has the ability to deal with the principal parts of what he's doing on yes. earth. It is only a woman that you can put a seed that you cannot see into. And what comes out at the other side is a divine destiny. It's not a women's meeting at all. I'm just letting you understand the technology that is standing in front of you. God has put before you a catalytic converter of intangibles to tangible. Let us try and take some word and then let us pray. 
so that this territory will know that a new order of South African has arisen. No, you don't understand it. I am bold to say we have come to deal with territorial powers. You know, sometimes it needs somebody who is not subject to those powers to fly in. To hold the hands of those who are in the territory so that together we move out. I salute the church in South Africa and the work you've been doing. We have come to hold your hands. We are not pastors. We don't plant churches. This is all we do. Coming from afar. You may be seated. I will try and hurry because I hear people don't hurry too much, but I do hurry. <laughs> Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. I want us to go back to the beginning of beginnings. Why I like Genesis. And I want you to be sensitive in the spirit. Don't, just don't mind. Let God do whatever he wants to do. This is the house of God. Everybody looks as tush as you, don't they? I said there must be a place where A-listers can meet God. Yes. Where they can be themselves. God wants to birth something in your life. Have you Shelly Brando Sakatakatai? Genesis 1:1. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Then verse 2 says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. Now if you know God well enough, it is not possible that He will create something that is void and in chaos. I wish it was even void. But the real word in the Hebrew, tohu and bohu, means it was chaotic. So God created Africa. Blessed it with so many minerals, resources, platinum, gold, diamonds, a resourceful people. And then look at Africa today. So much chaos. If there's something God does not like, it's chaos. He wants systems, he wants structures, he wants order. And the Bible says in Genesis 1-3, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now the word in the Hebrew is not let there be physical light, like this light shining on us because in Genesis 1 created those physical lights in the sun and in the moon. So that couldn't be what he was referring to here. Here the word light is actually the Hebrew word order. God said let there be order. Let there be order in your life right now. Order in your destiny. Order in your finances. Order in that womb. Order in that marriage. Order in that ministry. Order in that family. Order in your mental health. Let there be order. Let everything that does not know its place, know its place. Let there be order. And then he said, let there be order. Why would he have created everything beautiful and then all of a sudden, there was chaos. Just like in your life, in God's life, there was an adversary. So the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, it's talk, let's take Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. It said, How art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground in this meeting, this evening, which did weaken the nations? Then he begins to say what Lucifer said, verse 13. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will cause disorder. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Please remember that I will be like the Most High. Very important. Verse 15. He says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Then we look again in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. He said, and there was war in heaven. The dragon fought. Yes. 
there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels paused for a moment. South Africa, I've come to announce to you that Satan is not the opposite of God. He's not the sub opposite of Elohim Elion. He's not the opposite of El Shaddai. He's not the opposite of Yahweh. He's a created being. So that when he rebelled in heaven, God did not lift a finger. Because if he lifted a finger, it would be an unfair fight. So a lot of us think that in our life, God is fighting. Satan is fighting back. No! Even in heaven when there was war, God sent another angel to deal with the angel. Created being versus created being. He didn't get up. It would have been unfair, totally unfair and God is not unjust for God to be fighting Lucifer. And even with that, when your angel fought, God said there was no place found for the devil. Go to the next verse. And he was cast down to the earth. Now there's a problem. Everything keeps saying there was trouble in heaven. Someone got cast down to the earth. Trouble in heaven. Someone was cast down to the earth. Guess who lives on earth? Who? You and I. So, when God created the heavens and the earth, an entity was cast down. So there's a, a gap between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. And the reason why there was darkness upon the face of the deep is because the enemy of God was creating chaos on the earth. And God's solution to it is number one. Let there be order. So he means this is a statement of intention. I am going to restore order. So you need to now pack up and begin to look at it. How is he going to restore the order? Then he begins creation. He said, let there be day and let there be night. Let it be possible to calibrate progress because I, God, do not dwell in time at all, Tammy. I don't even dwell in eternity because eternity is a configuration of time. Do you see? So who needs time? I need time. You need time to calibrate our progress, to measure what we're doing. We need time so that when we wake up tomorrow morning, we can forget the mistakes of yesterday. We need time so that we can say new every morning is his love and his mercies. Do you understand that? We need time so God can load into every day daily provision for us that we can access. But he doesn't need time. Then he begins to create the sun, the moon, the stars. On day three, the dry land. Because the time is short, I just want you to understand that anything God created before man was a toolkit for man. Should I go over it again? If you see the sun, the sun is a toolkit for you to use. In fact, Genesis 1, let them be for times and for seasons. Let there be heavenly brigades and heavenly Rolexes so that people can just check and say, it is now time for this. I'm 30 something, it's time to get married. I'm 16, I'm 17, I should go to uni. Let them be for times and for seasons, for days and for years. But listen, so he created the greater light to rule the day. And the lesser light to rule the night. Mm -mm, you are missing it. To rule. To rule. The sun rules. If it's not ruling for you, it's ruling for someone. And I'm bearing my gloves in South Africa. I don't mind because I know the adverse spiritual people bear their gloves. Why don't we say it the way it is? After this meeting, when you go back to the marketplace, when you go back to the mountain on which you operate, where every other person is using something or the other, you too, you know what you are using this time. Look, let's be blunt. Everybody believes in something. Even the atheist believes in something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. So, he created. The way a woman who is expecting a baby begins to put a nursery together. He put a son because you will need the son. You are not using it, but some people are. He put the moon because you will need the moon. Don't even go there. Astrologers walk with the moon. But you just look at it and think, well, it has nothing to do with me. Why will God say, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night? Which means the moon has the capacity to smite you. If not told what to do. That is why God said, the end next expectation of the creature, Romans 8, 19, awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. The creation itself has been subject to corruption. Creation does not want to do what is doing against you, Zeb, who is being made to do it. And he's waiting for you to wake up, to take your own place to, and tell it what to do. Or you will tell it this afternoon. <laughs> yes, I know. They come in in their thousands. They come in from afar. They come in from afar. He says, in Genesis 1 26 let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness and let them the Hebrew says master the earth mm. let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air it begins to list but it does not put other human beings on that list it does not put other human beings the desire to control and manipulate other human beings is witchcraft. <laughs> he begins to list. This is the solution to disorder. Create a man. Men who get to Nigeria, South Africa, Botswana, Namibia and are afraid of the devil. These are the ones that God thinks is a solution then there must be something in you that you have not seen that God sees. Because you know, when you tell your one year old to run a marathon, you are being unfair. You will never demand of one what you have not given them the capacity for or else you are unjust. So if God sent man to create order on the earth, it's because we have the capacity to deal with a dragon that was sent to the earth. Oh, somebody will get it. Yeah. That's why he said, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through whom? Man. He turned to the Elohim, the heavenly council, and says, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. And it sounded good to them. Because the Bible says in Job chapter 38 verse 4, when God is reprimanding Job, he said, where were you at the foundation of the earth when I was creating Verse 7 of Job 38 says, When all the sons of God, the Elohim, shouted for joy. That means when the Elohim, the angels, who are not the messengers now, but the counselor angels, saw God create you. They said, look at Colleen, this is the solution. They shouted for joy. They never thought a day will come, Mama, when we'll be cringing before San Gomez. No, they never thought there was a day when that man would be afraid of people who channel demons, which is all that is a witch. If the witches could have stopped me from coming, I wouldn't be here. They did their best. They did their best, but I'm here. Do you get it? Your hunger is so much. The hunger is so much. And God responds to hunger. The morning star saw God's idea. He saw, they saw today. And they shouted for joy. This is brilliant. The very idea of Thami is brilliant. The idea of Alala Jumoke, the idea of Howard Hans, the idea of Muzi, the idea of Linda is right. So he created man, a king and a priest because he needed to be both. 
He need, needed to be a king with jurisdiction and territory. He needed to be priest to hear the counsel of God, decode the motive and the mind and the will of God for each generation, for each season. He needed to be a king to enforce the acts of God and to be a priest to know the ways of God, which means not just what God does, but what motivates what he does. And God knew that it is a possibility. I can send this son of God. So the idea, uncle, was this. There is a heavenly council, but we will have an earthly council that will do the will of God the, exactly the way the heavenly council does it. How will it be? Because I will go down and create from the dust of the earth. And why the dust of the earth? Because of the law of territoriality. Therefore, nobody can deal with the issues of South Africa like South Africans. That if I am going to make anything function within a sphere, it must come from that sphere. So fishes come from the water and function within the water. Are you getting it? And man comes from the earth and functions within the earth sphere. So much, mama, you know, that when God was going to send his own self, apostle, he needed to come in the suit of man. man God himself could not invade our sphere without the cloth that man wears, which is flesh. And therefore he needed something. He needed a woman. Uh -huh. God himself needed a woman. It is interesting and you have to look at it. That when God was creating and sending Yeshua HaMashiach, no man was involved. Uh-huh. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that there is no male gamut. How shall these things be? Seeing that there is no man involved. God said, you shall contribute the egg. But the power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow your female gamut. And what will be born of you will become the son of the Most High. Therefore, Jesus never said he's the biological seed of Joseph. Never. He said, I am the son of man. But we all know that he's the seed of the woman. Uh -huh. Only the woman will get it. Therefore, he's the adopted son of man. He's the biological seed of the woman. The reason why God could come into the human race is because there was a willing woman to birth him. Are you a woman in this hall? So what does God want to birth through you? Birkins, Louis Vuitton bags. In Nigeria, we call it Pepe Dem Gang. Is that what he wants to birth? Birth maker, birth wigs. He's looking to you to birth the entrance of a new South Africa to stop the rivalry with your sister and begin to uphold her hand. To stop fighting other pastor's wives, other apostles' wives. To begin to walk together. Because when the time for birthing comes, he calls the women. He says, bring us the willing women. Ha! There is nothing, there is no one like you are we my young there is nothing there is no one like you so he sent the man to the earth a king and a priest and he knew man could do it once that Intimacy is not broken, sir. Once every cool of the day, God himself visits with man. He knew. That's why I loved it when Tammy was talking about intimacy with God. You can go back to that marketplace. Once you don't break that vital connection. That is our X factor. When I was designing the Ministry of Finance, I say the story. My boss will come in and say, Jumaka, we need to solve this problem before 12. And I said, don't worry, come back, it will be solved. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I'll close the door. Then I tell the Holy Spirit, I have told them to come back at 12. What are we going to do? It's the truth. 
And by 10, p 10 a.m., I'm like, this is it. Until one day, as a 23-year-old, my boss said to me, it's youth copper. That, that means I was serving the name, whatever I was doing. My boss turned to me and said, should we not hand over the running of the office to you? That day I knew I was in trouble. I got out because the managing partner was listening. He's the X factor. He's the one who tells you the agenda behind what the person in the boardroom is saying. I sit on boards and the COO and the CFO are quarreling. And you know, they say, saying we should go to um, maybe audit and governance committee. And I'm like, can you not see that the problem between these two is this and that? And they're like, what? Because there's someone, I'm not sitting alone. Someone is feeding. <laughs> Pastors, I've come to solve your problem. That problem of people battling with you with a mic, it can't happen again after this meeting. Because you see, you need to understand that the five-fold ministry, people like me, people like the apostles in this room, are given to prepare you for the work of the ministry, which is outside the four walls of the church. So the anointing that keeps moving, loading inside you, it is not to fight the pastor. It is not to grab the pastor's mic. It is for you to go back to the bank and be the pastor of the bank, the pastor of the investment house, the pastor, it is what it is. I work when I was 35, I would work with 55 year old governors. At a point, I always start work as an architect. If you have to announce to anybody that I'm a Christian, it's because there's not enough evidence until you say it. We will push ourselves to the point that they will say, Jumoke, you are the only one who gives me good advice. Should we put a road here? You are the one, only one who tells me. And the 55 year old will go on his knees and say, pray for me. Look, this same person who says it, I see bishops with their uh, crosses pass by and say, 2007 to 2000, the person goes, yeah, don't answer him. I'm giving you the back end. I am a lay person and at the same time in the fivefold, I'm telling you what happens when you leave the room. Give him an envelope, let him go. You hear things like I have 120 men of God praying for me on my payroll. <sighs> yes, I know there will be men of fire. They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. I see the words wealth transfer. Because when they're saying, Tammy was saying, Christians don't finance. How much money do Christians have? Christians don't have plenty of money. Now I'm very honest. Why? Because we don't work together. When one Christian gets rich, they want to show off to the others. I don't know. Why are we like a bucket of crabs? Can I say it? Or I shouldn't come back next year. So we don't network. We feel that her own shine will dull my own shine. Meanwhile, we are all kings. Everyone has a throne. So all Jobak is a convention of kings. So he put man on earth knowing fully well, I've given him everything he needs. If he visits with me, if he does not lose that connection, I'll be lying to you. If I make you feel he deposits the power in us and then leaves us to our devices, no. John 5, 19, Jesus says, I can of myself do zero, except what I see the Father do. Which is why when you are unholy and you are moving in power, I want to know what kind of power it is. Because you have not seen the Father. Because the Bible says without holiness, it is impossible to see the Lord. So who are you puppeting? Who are you reflecting? Who are you imaging? We will talk about power today. And how come it looks like some people have power? And then you understand the kind of power you have. <laughs> he said, everything you see that came before you is for you. It is so that when you are on an apostolic mission, and an apostolic mission is that mission in the marketplace, you are sent there. You see, kingdom people don't move for bread. They move for assignments. So they don't move for a higher salary, a bigger yeah. salary. They move for what is the agenda for the season? What does God want me to do? Yeah, yeah. 
When you follow the agenda, the provision comes there. No, 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 I'm telling you what I know. Awesome treasures. Was it not money we brought into South Africa? It is Nigerian money we are spending in South Africa. And the account you saw there, no Nigerian is a signatory to it. So we didn't come here to make money to take it out. Abide in your calling. That's the meaning of submission. Stay where he puts you. And he will make all grace abound towards you. We will pray, please. You want to pray, oh God, open my eyes that I may see. We're almost done. Now it's time to pray. Hmm. Therefore, everything that came before man was for man. So woman, hint, hint. Everything that you saw created before woman was for what? Somebody will be sharp and get it. So God created everything and he created man and he said, it is not good. And then he looked and he said, I will create somebody else <laughs> that has never, ah, should I unpack it? Am I free? Because there are women here, you know, just as a bonus to women. Do I have the permission of the men to give the women like a, just a, a dessert? Mm. Remember that God said, Genesis 1, 26, to the Elohim, let us create man in our own image and after our own likeness and they thought it was so God created man in his own image and his own likeness so that means man number one was an he is an image of God which means son and daughter of the most High in South Africa whatever you see your father do in heaven you can do now because heaven is too far he sent his son in the human flesh who repeatedly will call himself the son of man because he's trying to remind you that you share a common trait which is flesh, which is blood that whatever can limit you can limit him and if he can overcome the limitation so can you you are getting it so anything you see Jesus do you can do if they did not lock him down on a hospital bed, you need to get out of that hospital. If he was not barren, you need not be barren. If he was not mentally challenged, you will not be mentally challenged. Did he have an adversary? Yes, he did. Jesus himself said in Mark 4, 35, let us go to the other side. He was master of the universe, creator of everything. But some necromancers, some sangomas in the area decided to manipulate the wind and the water and the waves against the one who created it. So why do you think you will have no challenges? Oh. Why do you think you will be exempt? When God himself created the heavens and the earth, then somebody interrupted. God did not start crying. He rose up the way you will rise up this evening. He said, let there be light. Jesus said, God said, I want to cross over to the other side. Yet something attempted to stop him. How much more you? Let me build a church. Something will attempt. Let me build a ministry. Something will attempt. Let us build a business. Let us build a nation. Let us build a continent. Something whipped up the winds and the sea. But because he was wise, the Bible says he rose up. He rebuked not the sea first, but the wind. Because the wind is always the unseen force behind that sea. So you see yourself falling into some evil lusts you don't understand. Your heart wants to do differently. Your body is going another direction. It is time to rise up and rebuke the wind. When you rebuke the wind, the sea will fall into place. Yeah. And the Bible says in Mark 4, 39, there was a great calm. A great calm is coming on your life. I said he created you a king and a priest. And King Joshua was fighting the marketplace. In Joshua chapter 10, 
and the sun was about to go down. Remember, he was not fighting to build his kingdom. Enough is enough of we building our own kingdoms. He was fighting because of covenant, because they had made a promise to the Gibeonites. Either it was keep taken by fraud or whichever way, covenant is covenant. Now, there is no blood that is thicker than the blood of Jesus. Botswana blood is not. South African blood is not. The highest form of blood is kingdom citizenship blood. You understand that? When that job is linked to kingdom finance, when that promotion and that platform is like the platform of Esther, you know you are there for the sake of the kingdom. Deborah said, village life ceased. It ceased in Israel until I, Deborah, arose. But I did not arise like any other church. I arose and took ownership of the nation. Ha! Mm. Creation is waiting for the Elohim on earth to begin to give it commands. That's the last frontier. We've left it to some people for too long. You know what God said to me? He said the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. So if he said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. That word subdue in the English gives us like a connotation of two forces clashing. But no, in the Hebrew it says mastering. The way you master an instrument. The way you master your guitar. You learn to play it skillfully. You learn to make it give you the sound you want to hear. You learn to make it do what you want it to do. Let the earth obey your command. It is here for you. Let me show you some mysteries that I may be decoding tomorrow. He, when he says in Genesis, the third day he created the earth. And you say you don't have land in Johannesburg. How? When they created land, who was it created from? He said, let the dry earth appear. And you have no house. How did you do it? You speak to the earth. Earth! You don't need to be too greedy. Don't go to Houghton yet. And stay in Rosebank. Hear ye the voice of the Lord. Let space be made for me in Johannesburg. Because you understand the meaning of owning a piece of the earth in the apostolic realm. If it is one inch by one inch that is your own and you stand up and make a decree. But no, you want a mansion to show off. God says you will wait. Hmm. There is nothing, there is no one like you, are we, my M. There is nothing, there is no one like you. I never digress. I said, he said, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And I gave man the authority to master the earth. When man fell, he did not lose the authority to master the earth or the power or the mastery of mastering the earth. Do you understand? What he lost was vital relationship with God. But some people hold that mystery of mastering the earth today. So some Sangoma will pick up the sand and speak to the sand and say, go after Mama Tembu. Now Mama Tembu does not know. She thinks that earth is just earth. Meanwhile, she too can say to the earth, Oh us! Oh us! Oh us! Hear you the voice of the Lord. Vomit every token that has ever been put in you concerning me. Come on, speak to the earth right now. Every token. Vomit it. Whoever planted anything concerning Jumoke in the earth, earth, vomit it. Give it back to them. Look. If there's something I do, listen. <laughs> Take my prayer. Oh Lord. Take my, Take pray. my prayer. That's my God. If there's something I do, I speak of what I know and I've tested. There are many truths. I don't need to double into what I've not tested. 
But when it comes to the earth, I will give you dates. One day, the 21st of March, God said, you teach it and teach it, now use it. I went outside my house, Abbasan, and the security guard was looking, I'm like, excuse me, am I walking with your legs? It was midnight. Went to the earth, scooped the earth, and I said, earth, I just want to have a discussion with you. You know, because the earth is not used to hearing your voice. Sometimes you wake it up. That's why in Jeremiah 22, 29, Jeremiah spoke to the earth three times. Earth! 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 Hear you the voice of the Lord. I said to the earth, I just want to talk to you concerning the Adena words. Iron ore comes from you. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness, the rough, the world, and those that dwell therein. If you need a car, the iron ore is what they use to make the car. Comes from where? The earth. There's nothing you eat that was not once attached to the earth. Even if it is chemically derived. I said to the earth, please listen. No car is allowed to harm me or my children. And my husband is one of my children. So when I say children, get it. Trains, mama, come from metal. A train cannot have an accident when my child is in it. Amen. Planes come from metal. It cannot happen. I said, before I go, bullets come from iron ore, which are found in what? The earth. The next day was March 22nd. I have a personal trainer. It may not be showing, but honestly, I try. I try. And we were training outside my bedroom door. We finished and I stepped back in and I saw plaster all over the floor. You know, plaster of Paris. And I called my husband and said, it's leaking in this bedroom. And he said, is it raining? I said, no, uh, no, it's not. I said, but what, uh, uh, there is a hole in the roof. He said, uh, what kind of hole? What does it look like? I said, it's a pinpoint. Then I looked around and I saw a bullet from an AK-47. Why? Because the police investigated it. It landed and ricocheted, but it landed where I would have been sitting at nine o'clock wearing my shoes. It would have been either quadriplegia, paraplegia, or death. The earth hears. One of my ladies, I can give you names, she was serving her husband tea and he just collapsed. And she remembered this teaching and she said, Earth, oh, he collapsed and his eyes were rolling back. He was going within a minute. Two of them, Dolako and Omolola. I'm giving you names because it's real. It's in Acts of the Holy Spirit. And they said to the earth, 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 hear you the voice of the Lord. Anything that has been planted into this earth against this man, vomit it. The husband came to. I can tell you so many. If we are writing books on testimonies, it's so that. Mm. You want to speak to the earth. Yield your strength to me. Come on. Yield your strength. Yield your strength. I was saying again that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. So in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. And so we have an ignorant song in my country, which you wouldn't have here. Power day, pass power. When your man is a nana, power. It's not power passing power. The words are different. Behold, I give to you exousia, authority over all the dunamis yeah. of the enemy. Yeah. So yes, I know in Southern Africa, there's dunamis of the enemy. Yeah. But what you have is exousia. Yeah. And exousia is more powerful than dunamis. Yeah. It means I can come with an arsenal yeah. of dunamis. And exousia will say, don't shoot. Yeah. And that's the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I see there's a photo of the Nazis surrendering to the Allies. And the Nazis were powerful, come on. And they looked it. And they sent one gentleman from America to them, holding a pen. And the Nazis with all their arsenals of war could not shoot. They surround, surrender to a man with a pen. You don't have to look it, mama. 
You don't have to look here. You see, we're guerrillas. That's what we are. Yeah, you should know about guerrilla warfare in South Africa. It's not regular army. They don't see us coming. They just cast us in a roll. And they think, you know, it will be business as usual. And everything around the set begins to change. And they don't know what is cursing the stirring of the waters. Do you understand? Who did we employ in this company that's making everything change? Do you understand? Look, and there is no off switch for this part. Should I give you more examples? South Africa, are you tired of me? I'm not tired of you yet. I braid my hair. So one day somebody wanted to change my braiders and I'd warned them. As I got into the room they're going to braid in, I said, one of you, there's something off. Are you all Christians? Like we will say these days, yes, we're all Christians. So one of them was standing a bit behind for women. She was the one taking out the attachment, okay? The others were braiding. All of a sudden in a flash, I saw a vision. I knew something was about to happen. I just heard this girl fall on the ground and began to manifest because she moved too close to me. I said, but I asked if you were all Christians. He said, no, I had to. It was a deliverance session. There's no off switch. But let me give you a secret. You know why you don't know what you have? You haven't gone into battle. I looked at the life of Samson and Samson must have looked very regular. Because if not, why would you be asking for the secret of his bar? How can you be asking Muzi for the secret of his bar? Is this, is this a musu now? Like you say, Lego is musu. It's the muscle that is the secret of his power. You can say. So Samson could not have been muscular. He couldn't have been anything, or else it would have been a daft question. But every time an adversary roared against Samson, the something came on him. You are not invading. You are playing it too safe. You have retreated so safe, not taking any more territory. Nothing is roaring. Therefore, you don't know what is on you. Behold, I give you exousia. Hmm. I want you to pray in the spirit for a few moments. We're about to start to pray. It's been a powerful meeting. Every part, the program director has been preaching. The panel was lit. Half of what I want to say has been said. Take ownership. Psalm 110 says, <laughs> First it says, Jehovah said to my Lord, sit down. That means he is still sure that the original plan of restoring order to the earth will still work. That's why when the first Adam fell, he brought someone to restore us to the position of the second Adam. Mm, he's telling you something, perseverance, that there is power in the Adamic covenant that is stronger than any other covenant. Why didn't he restore us to the second Abraham? Why Adam? Because it is in Adam that the covenant of creation was made. So that he turned to his wife Eve and said, Genesis 3.20, Oh, before I called you woman and said you were taken out of man, that was a bad name. That's the way you call your wife, darling, babe, sweetie, whatever you call her. When man fell into real trouble, he looked at the person by his side and said, your name shall be Hawa or Eve because you are the mother of all living. That means God has coded into the woman the ability to talk to everything that has life. And that means the original mandate that God gave man to master the earth has been restored in Christ Jesus and he said as many as believed in this second Adam to them gave he the power to become 
As I said in Lusaka, the becoming is the same thing that he meant when he said, the power of the Most High shall overshadow you and you will become man. Therefore, the same process it took Jesus to become man is what takes man to become God. It is the word genomai. It's an actual process. It happens to you, you know. We have been given the power to become the sons of God. Let us pray now. I want us to pray. And our prayers are very clear. We're taking our place in South Africa. We're taking our place in the land. We're saying to the land, a new day has done. We're coming against every altar that has spoken against us from this territory. Ancestral altars that you have nothing to do with. You are not the one who did it, but will not let you go far. Aha. Uh -huh. Altars are portals where sacrifices are placed and priests tend those altars. So sometimes you deal with the altar, you forget the priest because the priest has generations. They will wake up again. That is why the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live because a demon is not a problem. It is a human being. Uh -huh. That's why Paul said, the Lord is on my side. I will not be afraid of what man can do unto me. Why that be man or woman or demon? If they will not let you go, you will let them go this afternoon. We are going to pray. Every altar. Every altar. Speaking against my destiny. Speaking against my destiny. By the blood of Jesus, be destroyed. Let us pray. Jesus, be destroyed. Every altar. Speaking against my destiny. By the blood of Jesus, be destroyed. Every altar. Speaking against my destiny. By the blood of Jesus, be destroyed. Now let us visit your ancestry. As you are praying, look at your mother's side, your father's side. Those of you who are married, maybe even divorced, look at what you married into. Let me explain. Can I be free? It's because of time. We are Africans. We had to protect ourselves. So, if the Zulus want to invade my kingdom, or someone else wants to invade, like in Nigeria, there's a place called Arochuku, and they have something called Long Juju. And they, want, they do it with the skulls of human beings. Why? Because according to what you want to invoke, you sacrifice that level of blood. So if you are not really invoking a major demon, you know you can sacrifice a pigeon. But when it is rising, you think of a lion. And when you want it to be more potent, you look for a newborn child who the entire life lies behind. I'm not a witch, oh. But it's according to what you want, the purity and the innocence. There is an African president, he's dead. But he was one of those despots who did not want to leave. Every time his country became restive under him, I'm not mentioning names, Southern Africa, they will bury a pregnant woman alive. Am I free to speak? Then they will put a white handkerchief in the fingers of the woman. Seven days she will rot, but she will give herself willingly because a voluntary sacrifice is more powerful. That is why we are voluntary sacrifices unto our God. Then they will take the handkerchief from the woman's fingers and then he will enter his cabriolet. You should know him because I know him. He has a cap that he wears and he will begin to wave it. And the citizens of the country will say, why do we fight this man? What has he ever done? We like him. Let him continue. Because all the favor in the life of the pregnant woman and the unborn baby have been transferred to that man through the instrumentality of that handkerchief. Am I still safe? And he uses it and the whole nation goes calm again. So we go to entities that we believe are stronger than us. We are about to be invaded. We will give you every firstborn son of our territory. 
Just make sure nobody ever invades us. And the entity will say, I don't just want you because the enemy is generational. It is the Christians who are not. The enemy is looking into your loins. So you say, I'll give you myself. You say, no, give me your children. Pharaoh said, you can go and worship anything. Leave the children behind. Do you hear? And then they too, ignorant. What? You can take the firstborn sons. And then you are a firstborn son. So every firstborn son will worship your altar. And then you, the firstborn son, get up and travel and go to America and decide you want to be a pediatrician. Then one day, you are in Walmart. And all of a sudden, you don't know how you left Walmart and dressed up and landed in Eswatini. And you're like, hello, why did I take my passport out of that? Because that altar was calling me. Come back. All the firstborn sons serve. They might let you rise to a level, maybe in ministry. Then you want to go too far. Your purity wants to become too much. Your own noise is disturbing their own altars. And they say, shut up! It's enough. We don't do that here. Every altar. Every altar. Speaking from my ancestry. Speaking from my ancestry. Against my greatness. Against my Be greatness. destroyed. Come on, pray. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every I'm altar. Not praying. Is this how you pray? Against my greatness for my ancestry. Be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, every, every altar, altar speaking, speaking from, my from my ancestry against my greatness be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, every altar in the name of Jesus. We are going to move fast. I'm going to help you. I will say every altar, speaking against my, I will mention it. You just shout, be destroyed. Is that good? Fine. So when I say every altar, speaking against my greatness, you do what? Be destroyed. That's it. Every altar, speaking against my greatness. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my lifting. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my fruitfulness. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my promotion. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my prosperity. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my lifting. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my marriage. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my wealth. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my glory. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my destiny. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my health. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against my children. Be destroyed. Come on, pray now. Pray against every altar. Every altar, speaking against my destiny. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Every altar, speaking against. Be destroyed. It says, and I will send for many fishers, and they will fish them out. I will send for many hunters, they will hunt them out. With this prayer, we're going to pray. God is going to send the angelic fishers, the fishermen, against every alien in your destiny, in your life. Are you getting it? He's going to send the angelic hunters against every everyone who has want to take you, take you a prey. Yeah. So we are going to say, Father! Father! Send the fishers! Fish them out! Fish them out! Fish them out! Expose! Be exposed! Fish them out! 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 Be exposed! Be exposed! In the name of Jesus! Be exposed! Send the fishers! Fish them out! Fish them out! Be exposed! Out of their hiding places! Be exposed! Fish them out! 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 Fish them
Fish them out! Fish them out! Out of the hiding places! Fish them out! In the name of Jesus! We don't have to pray for long. We're moving on. Ezekiel 21, 27. He says, I overturn, overturn, overturn. We want to overturn every evil foundation in our life. Yes. As an architect, I know, sometimes what you have to do is go into the foundation and overturn the foundation. Because Psalm 11 verse 3 says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Look, we just talk about immorality and a lot of things. We don't know what some people fight. Mm, I'm not excusing it. You come from a background where they say, this is your destiny. Then you say you want to go and serve God. They will let you go for a while then. Today you are going to say, I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. Every evil foundation of my life in the name of Jesus. In the name you don't talk about. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. Every evil foundation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God says, I want to impart. First, he wants to impart a definite anointing on some people here. Your heart is hungry. And he will choose you himself. And the ushers should know what to do. I abide under your anointing. I abide under your control. I abide under your anointing, I abide under your control. I stay in your arms, Lord Jesus. I know I am saved. Under your anointing, I abide under your control. I stay in your arms, Lord Jesus. I know I am saved. out to me. You are going to place your hand on your head. It's not about the terminology of the name. Jesus means Savior. Yeshua HaMashiach means Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Come on, Shaleba! We want him to choose some vessels here. I'm going to shout, count to three. And we're going to shout, Jesus. We have come for an impartation.
I abide under your control. He says there are three more. The apostolic, Lord, the prophetic, with the boldness to go with it, Lord God. Those who will not touch, feel the lucre. Fire! Fire! The land needs it, God! We are going to count to three. Put your hand on your head. One! And you are going to shout Jesus. Two! Because of time, we are going to do several things at once. A people I have not known will obey me. When they hear my voice, they will submit to me. Foreigners shall hear my voice and come trembling out of their closed places. Now, this hour is the prince of this world judged. Today, he is evicted. Satan, I convict you of treasonable felony. You come out of your hiding place. One, two, three, Jesus. Jesus. There is no one like you. There is nothing, there is no one like you at all Farati. There is nothing, there is no one like you. Oh, oh, oh. They came for your gold. Wait, I want a camera. You say this is a city of gold. It also has platinum. This country. It also has diamonds. And God said South Africa has not seen wealth. I'm telling you. But he's going to give a particular kind of people. Yeah. You are going to feel two things like a weight come on your head for some it will overcome you if it does that ushers bring them out <laughs> you are going to feel your feet running because you spent too long at that spot and it's time to accelerate your destiny we are going to count to three 
put your hand on your head again. Father, their smell must change. Release an anointing for wealth. Release an anointing for wealth. Not the wealth of fools that will destroy Not the them, Lord. Not the wealth of fools that will destroy you. My help has come. One, two, three, Jesus. Can I hear Jesus? Lord of the wealth, Lord of the nations. should go because of time because we are just warming up but I think we should go because of time let's take one more thing God wants to do he wants to change the smell of some people here. Yeah, because there smells in the spirit realm. Other people do what you do. They get away with, you, with it. When you try it, you can't. Your smell must change. Genesis 27, 27, behold! The smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. If there's anything that has been oozed up, ah, should I tell you the way it is or should I just anglicize it and go? These things exist. I have seen them. One day, Mama Paul, somebody wanted to interfere in some family situation for us. And the people involved were from a particular place in Nigeria that they're so diabolical, they're known for it. The man stepped out of the house to come and welcome him in. And I said, uncle, what is on the back, your back? Do you know what was on his back? Raw human waste that came from the spirit realm. I saw it, nine of us saw it. That was what they sent to him, say, how dare you try and intervene? And that's because they overdid. They didn't need to do that. You can smell the, you can send the smell without the physical, they were showing off. Now the Holy Ghost wants to show off too. Any entity that has caused there to be a stench upon you, that you try and you try and you just cannot please anyone, that stench must leave you this hour. I want to tell you the power of what we want to do because you see you don't turn asking the Lord to intervene into a ritual you don't turn shouting on the Lord whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved don't turn it into a ritual I was in a Baptist church and I thought well Baptist and well they said they weren't they said they were prepared but they weren't prepared and as I was speaking I saw a woman fall forward, which is normal for me. So I thought she just fell forward. 
then I saw people in t-shirts rush to her, carry her off. Still, I thought they weren't used to the fact that she was slain. And I could see commotion at the back and then peace. Well, I just said, I had the Holy Ghost say, tell them to shout Jesus. So I said, we're going to count to three and shout Jesus. And they did. It was later I heard what happened. Mama, the woman died. By now, would have been famous. You'd have heard, you can invite her to your church if you like. I just want you to know that people will die when she preaches. It's not that, I'm not saying don't invite her. It's just that, you know, the woman died. And they were battling. That's what they were doing. And when we said, when I said, shout Jesus, and the saints shouted Jesus, nobody touched her. She sneezed and she came back to life. Doctors pronounced her dead, not lay people. Everything that is dead in your destiny, this is the time it has to come alive. Lift your hands to heaven. Your smell must change. Ah, ah. God says his power is coming on a firstborn son. In this, in, this, in this section, you just have to release yourself to God. It's coming. My, my left hand is burning because every demonic entity that has targeted you because you are the one who's going to rise the highest in your family and already is causing a problem. The time has come. One, two, three, Jesus. sometimes do this just so that I don't take anybody's blessing back home with me. Young lady on the right in the middle section that is asking God, why did you overlook me when you are picking people to carry your power? The power of God is coming upon you now. The power of God is coming upon you now. You will shout and scream and will know it is you. Because you said, that's her, that's her, that's her, bring her out. Because you said, God, why did you, you didn't pick me. And he says, I don't forget you. I have not forgotten you. Why I ask you to bring them out is because the chairs have metal feet. You understand? That's although never, nobody has ever gotten hurt before. Nobody has ever, ever gotten hurt. Nobody has ever gotten hurt. Put your hand on your head. Hey! Come in and I don't know that song. Should I take another one? Yeah, yes. Yes, you are. Wait a minute. You may not know the song. The song says, It all belongs to you. Which means this throne I want to sit on now belongs to you. It belongs to you. Let the kings put their hands on their head. Put their hands on their head. A weight is coming upon you. It's kabod. It's a glory. A weight is coming. It's a glory. It's not a bad weight. Oh, I see. Three eagles leave me and go in that direction. Number one. That's number two. So. Where is number three? I'm going to give you time to pray. You are the one who knows your industry. Talk to God. Let the gatekeepers be made available to you. Come on, talk to God. And then we're going to shout Jesus. And let's see, Flo, what God wants to do. Talk to God. What is the industry you are in? Final prayer.
prayer point. Spirit of the living God. Here we are. I'm talking to him. Here we are. You know who is next to be anointed. You know who is rich. You know who will give you the glory. You know who will give you the platform, Lord God. Regardless of age, young or old. As I call upon the name of Jesus, anoint them. One, two, three, Jesus. Shout Jesus. The time has come, Father. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. You need to come and take it. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you very much, South Africa. It's been amazing to be here.